since the Twitter files seven slash eight, seven didn't do shit. So eight, they rushed eight out. And right now that's about the DOD manipulating Middle Eastern accounts by having sock puppet accounts. And apparently Twitter found out about it at one point, but it took them a while to shut them down. But they did. End of story. Also, the idea that, you know, the, the people that this is pissing off, of course, is the Iranian government and anybody who doesn't want women to drive cars, which I guess is, you know, Tom Fitton and everybody who goes to Talking Points USA. Um, look at the, uh, I love this and the Chiron <laughs> and the Dow. This has got to be fucking with them as well. <coughs> Damn it. Why won't the Dow drop to 26.5? Why won't... Die, die, die. Why won't you ruin people's uh, 401ks so Trump can have a chance at a comeback? Um, by the way, I, I <laughs> this is uh, titled, Who Else Was the FBI uh, Paying to Spy on Americans? Now, I'm sure we'll get into January 6th. There were um, the idea that there were um, people... We, we now know, by the way, from the January 6th committee, from uh, the text messages and the messages that they received um, that were, you know, people were saying, holy fuck, you got to do something. Like I was, I'm all for protesting, but these guys are going to murder people. They're bringing, they're, they're making pipe bombs. They're building a gallows. They're bringing guns. This is different. And so those people who consider themselves maggots, full blown maggots, were all of a sudden getting really fucking nervous that on the day, the Ashley Babbitts of the world were going to have guns in their bags. And once they made it through, they were just going to slaughter people. And they that crossed the line even for some people who were comfortable storming the steps and standing up there and going, yay, Donald Trump, Uber Alice, right? Um, but uh, the, the storyline is now that the FBI is paying people to be un-American. Latest batch of Twitter files revealing more details of FBI influence. No. <laughs> yes. You know what? One of the biggest things that it, it shows is that uh, more often than not, Twitter told the FBI to go pound sand. The FBI was like, hey, could you look at this? And they're like, yeah, we looked at it. Never mind. That's it. Hardly hand in glove, I would say. On Twitter to try to censor the Hunter Biden laptop story. Yes, the Hunter Biden laptop story, because there is no Hunter Biden laptop. And the White House simply refusing to answer questions about it all. Roll tape. The latest Twitter files show that the intelligence community was actively involved in discrediting the Hunter Biden laptop story. No, they weren't. Does it bother? Oh, by the way, um, notice the phrasing here. That's fascinating to me. Was actively involved. Here, listen to her say it again. And remember that the story itself is discredited. It is false. So the intelligence community being involved in if you tell the truth about someone who says, who's lying to people, you are actively involved in the discrediting of that incredible source, that non-credible source. Get me? That's fascinating, the phraseology. was actively involved in discrediting the Hunter Biden laptop story. Does it bother the president and those at the White House that a government agency like the FBI was involved? Under Donald J. Trump. Involved in suppressing a legitimate news story. Uh, it wasn't a legitimate news story. It was an October surprise and it failed miserably. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to refer you to the FBI. I'm not going to comment from here about that. We are joined now by Judicial Watch President. And king of the blush club for men. Tom Fitton. Tom Honest to God, I don't know what the deal is with Tom Fitton. He wears more blush than any man. That I, I'm, I'm surprised the Proud Boys aren't picketing him and calling him a groomer. Um, the extraordinary thing is they are referring people, they're referring the media to the organization that apparently was disseminating misinformation. Nope. To try. They were warning of misinformation. To influence a social media company. I mean, no. And even then, they were telling the truth and it didn't work. I, why should we go to them for the story? Why, why should you go to him? Dude has a company called Judicial Watch and he's not even a fucking lawyer. When they were provided. But I, you don't have to be a lawyer to watch justice. The media. I have Law and Order on uh, the box set all 22 seasons. With misinformation before. 
Yeah, he does need a French powder wig. I obviously, I like, is when's somebody going to put, like, one of those fake beauty spots on Tom Fitton? Sink me! If this isn't exactly the kind of circumstance I would find myself in. <laughs> well, yeah, and on top of that, the last I checked, Joe Biden is president of the United States. <laughs> He's responsible for the conduct of the FBI. <laughs> is he responsible for the conduct of the FBI when John, when Donald John Trump was fucking president? No. I and should be demanding accountability. Is this still going on? On top <laughs> No, why would it still be going on? I can't is there anything about the Hunter Biden laptop story you can't find details of online? Of course not. And and no one gives a shit. You know why? Because there's no there there. Even the stories where they dove in, which I've covered constantly, like every time they come up, they're like, well, there's no direct uh, you know, signs of a crime, but it's the appearance of impropriety. That, uh, meanwhile, Trump is literally signing deals in the Middle East while he's president. That comes out now, and they're like, "What? The who?" Up of this effort to uh, interfere with the election uh, at <laughs> interfere with the election by not letting our October surprise bullshit get through. That time, you had the FBI working with their former colleague James uh, uh, James Baker over at Twitter. So everybody who leaves an organization is suspect is just basically still on the tit for that organization. That's that's how it works from now on. Do, do you see the trap that the Republicans are opening for themselves for all these fuckers who have left government and joined, uh, you know, become lobbyists or become executives at all these other companies? Those guys, they, you know, their time in government had nothing to do with it. They're just smart businessmen and they go where the money is who was the former uh, attorney, um, top attorney for the FBI, moved over to Twitter. Uh, you had the FBI paying Twitter to censor on, to censor and spy on Americans. Oh, citation needed. So what else? By the way, the illusion that these accounts that they're supposedly looking at are automatically Americans because they're like, my name is Joe from Ohio, is a bunch of shit. And uh, Matt Taibbi does this whole big thing about how the FBI started caring about these accounts that barely had any followers. That's because that's how troll fucking accounts work. They follow everybody. They have no followers because where the fuck would they get them other than similar accounts, which red flags them. If bots follow bot accounts, the algorithm can tell. So they just sit there below the radar with less than five and they don't chart. That was one of the ways they could get around the bot sentinels that they did have working in the automated aspect of Twitter. This was the FBI. Who else is the FBI paying? Were they paying Facebook? It looks like. Were they paying Google and YouTube, which owns YouTube? Look. Wait, Google and YouTube own YouTube? Fabulous. Uh, the FBI uh, paid. YouTube owns YouTube? When did that shit start? Christopher Steele to dig up dirt and create dirt. No, he already had the dirt beforehand. They, they paid him to talk to other people because he actually had connections. He used to work for MI fucking six. Dirt on Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not a good sign, stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's a good put the put the fact that all of these companies, um, their their uh, <laughs> their stock prices are going up. Meanwhile, Twitter's is frozen in place because it's now privately owned and it's not worth a shit right now. And then Pinterest. The fuck, get off Pinterest's back. Again, the, F Did the FBI, was the FBI controlling housewives who wanted to set up entire, like, um, wish boards of shoes? FBI starts paying Twitter and these other big social media platforms to spy on Americans. And <laughs> wow. Why, why would they have to do that when somebody like Elon Musk can roll through and just give Matt Taibbi, Barry Weiss, and Schellenberg access to your fucking DMs. They all, ladies and gentlemen, have employee laptops. That's right. Right now, all the people who are writing um, for the, you know, writing the Twitter files for Elon Musk can just look right in your fucking DMs. Right now. Everybody's. But, you know, they, they're, these people are trustworthy. Not like, I don't know, agents that Ha swear an oath to protect the Constitution and have to follow the law or they'll lose their job and go to jail. 
and it looks like to suppress information that could have helped Trump and hurt Biden during. By the way, uh, Earthshine is saying the good news is everybody's gotten tired of this shit and won't believe them going forward. No one in my town had their Trump stuff out. They're, the gig is up. Younger generations will vote blue, not red, and it's because they don't like old fucks who lie. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of something to that. In the campaign. This is <coughs> direct election interference. No, it isn't. <laughs> yes, well, you guys try to interfere in the election by lying, and someone stops you. So they're interfering with your interference. Seriously, the New York Post story about the Hunter Biden laptop, the alleged, the hard drive called laptop that they saw printouts from with no metadata um, and a thumb drive with some video files on it and went, yeah, this all comes from the laptop, which I'll show you later, I promise. Um, that stuff, uh, that story comes out on October 14th of 2020. Rudy Giuliani allegedly had this stuff in his hands in January. John Paul McIsaac was shopping it around in October of 2019. Of course, after Rudy had gone in, uh, the, in August of 2019 and came back with a hard drive full of shit that he paid $5 million he paid five million for. Allegedly, they were selling it for three and he paid two million more. I guess they, you know, he'd read the art of the deal and, you know, it, it, part of one of the chapters is roll it up and stuff it up your own ass. But that, so they had this, this hard drive full of bullshit. The Russians had broken into the Burisma servers and not only taken files out, but had planted files as well. Same shit that they did when they stole the AstraZeneca vaccine, which, uh, by the way, of all the vaccines to steal, sh short of Johnson & Johnson, literally the worst one. <laughs> because it was the least effective and they ended up having to buy the Pfizer and Moderna in, in the UK. Um, that said, and, and America gave away all of our AstraZeneca. Like, it'll work, but it's not great, so you can have it. <clears throat> and the Biden administration needs to be held accountable for it. For what happened during the Trump administration. In, in an organization run by the guy that, uh, that Trump replaced after he illegally fired the last guy. Pardon me while I boo fuckity who. The irony is it occurred during the Trump administration. It is. It's out of oh, God damn it. It's like, <laughs> yes, it is ironic, isn't it? It's almost as if the Biden campaign had no material power over fucking anyone. And Trump was trying to manipulate every aspect of the government for his own powerful power while he was there and still failed miserably because he's a lifelong fuck up. And it isn't interesting. Yeah. It's one of the- Yeah, it's very interesting. It's so interesting. It actually um, takes a giant dump on the forehead of your argument. A few things during the Trump administration that they don't want to talk about. Right, right. It's one of the few things they don't want to talk. No, no, I'll talk about it all the time. That allegedly this shit, this manipulation happened when Trump was basically what? Giving them the go ahead to, yeah, just uh, fill your boots. And then what happened? They went, oh, okay, uh, so we should just tell them what we need them to do. Yeah, don't be afraid of them. You tell them that he's apparently under the, the misapprehension that I, that I guess that he assumed they were going to take his narrative and force it down Twitter's throat instead of like, oh, okay, we, we should just tell them the truth of what we find and just be as direct as possible. He just assumed they were going to carry his water because he's that fucking dumb. Well, and, and it's what's extraordinary is Democrats were leading the charge against the FBI 40 years ago during. 40. 40 years ago. Something called the church committee hearings after Watergate to try to say, you got to take politics out of the FBI. You got to take it out of all the intel services, which were also playing Right. Hey, here's a good idea. Why don't you just talk about how Bill, uh, like um, Jimmy Carter was concerned about mail-in ballots before the invention of the personal computer and cell phones. Role in, in this cover-up. Uh, Jeez, if, if only Jimmy Carter had known about QR codes, why didn't somebody tell him in 1976? I mean, it's just what, whatever happened to their concern about civil liberties? <laughs> well, they set up rules about it, and those are met, largely. 
Um, the, and there's different rules for foreign actors who do not get the rights and privileges of U.S. citizens and people inside the United States who even domestic terrorists who get special protections because they are citizens. So you have to there's a lot more, you know, hoops you got to jump through. Well, and on top of that, uh, they are doing it now. Uh are they? The Twitter files show that the relationships continued until very recently. <laughs> Did they? They had a relationship? And it's not just the FBI, it's the Department yeah. of Homeland Security. Weird. It's almost as if there's some uh, international and domestic terrorism that happens in, uh, you know, using social media as both an, 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 an incendiary point and as a communication tool between the people who are attempting to carry out those violent acts. By the way, this is the Republican Party, I'd like to remind you. All of uh, whom used to think that there was a, a fucking commie or a Muslim behind every fucking corner. And that we had to watch out for any chance that they would have to sneak language. I mean, these are the people who think that, like, if a drag queen reads a storybook to your kid, they're going to be caught in a trans tractor beam and turned gay. You have special relationships with... Book burners, literally modern book burners. But it's us, okay. These big tech companies to suppress information and from the White House. Yeah, why are they suppressing uh, fentanyl sales and human trafficking and child porn and revenge porn? Why are they, I mean, Tom's gotta have something to watch too. Podium and from the president, you've had uh, direct instructions and cajoling of the big tech platforms uh, to continue to censor. Russia, if you're listening, if you could find the 30,000 emails, uh-huh, yeah, cajoling. Was there cajoling going on? Were you concerned about the cajoling? Was there glad-handing, backslapping? Don't tell me somebody grinned at somebody. Americans on topics mm -hmm. the uh, Biden people are sensitive about, like COVID and other disputes that... Uh COVID and other disputes... Tell me again, uh, who had who was president when the first lockdowns happened? I don't remember. It's been so long. Joe Biden thinks that you're not allowed to think differently f uh, from him on. Otherwise, uh, you'll be censored from. Right. He does. Is that is that what he says? You can't think differently than me or you will be censored. All of the censoring they're clamoring about started during the during the Trump administration. All of it. Largely because uh, sensible people were concerned that maggots were going to get themselves killed with horse dewormer and fish tank cleaner, which they were taking in suppository form. Twitter and elsewhere. Hey, Tom, be And elsewhere. You know, bathroom stalls. The town square. Perhaps um, it's smoky underground swamp creature clubs where cigars are, are imbibed upon. Is that how you... Consume a cigar. I don't Before we go, I want to talk about January sixth. Uh, yeah, yeah. Since since we're uh, making false equivalencies and and pretending to give a shit about law and order, I, 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 it would be it would be <laughs> it would be my fault if I didn't address this specifically. We had four criminal referrals from the January sixth committee for Donald Trump. What happened? You're a lawyer. Explain. Oh, right. You're not. What happens now. Well, uh, the first thing is we all go out and get uh, Sephora gift cards. Because we're, you know, I don't want people to think that I'm blushing on purpose. Well, I don't think much is going to happen with those referrals. I think the more problematic issue is the Justice Department currently is using January 6th. As oh, there is using? As a pretext to go after those who disputed, it looks like in good faith, uh, the election in 2020 it was a big. No. No, they aren't. No, look, all right. <laughs> you know, for lack of an if only moment. The, the January 6th committee isn't going after anybody who wasn't actively attacking the fucking Capitol one day, not like, or participating in it as a sales pitch in the case of Trump and Eastman. Nobody gives a shit if you lived in fucking Arizona and you're like, this is fake news, he really won. If you can have all the fucking yard signs you want, nobody cares. Nobody cares. As a matter of fact, you had, all right, there's two of my favorite cases in the January 6th thing, is these two guys, both of whom were right next to Officer Fanon. Um, uh, Fanon yeah, Fanon. And one of them was literally beating him with a flagpole. His buddy was with him, 
egging him on, but didn't hit him. Didn't physically act, but just kind of like was part of the crowd, was part of the cover, made sure that nobody, I guess, could come up behind the guy who was striking the cop with a fucking flagpole and stop him from doing it. The guy who hit him with the flagpole, that guy's in jail and he's going to stay in jail. The other guy went home, admitted he was there. It was on fucking video, filmed himself, proud of hanging out with his buddy. And then when he sat in front of a judge, was like, I'm sorry, I don't know what came over me. It was so wrong. That fucker went home. Now, explain to me, Republicans, anybody, maggots in the crowd, I know you're there. Explain to me how you feel about the idea that a cop is being beaten in the street with a baseball bat or a fucking steel pole. And another dude is acting as lookout and protection for the guy who's doing the beating so that no one will stop him. How do you feel about only one of those guys getting sentenced to anything or getting, you know, that the other guy gets probation? How do you feel about that, maggots? Hmm? Trump fans, explain yourself. How is the lookout in an assault on a police officer somehow less involved in the beating? Maybe the guy just didn't have the nerve. Maybe next time he will. Maybe he was like, yeah, yeah blunt weapon's not going to do anything. I wouldn't join in unless I had a knife. Fuck you. The nerve of these fucking people. We're the law and order party. Shut the fuck the up. Controversy was a big debate. And there it was a big debate, you know, you know, I, I thought my wife was cheating and uh, she had this guy at work that she talked to a little bit too much. And there was a back and forth. So my wife and I argued about it and stuff. And so your honor, I had to murder her because she, I think she was really cheating. It turned out she wasn't, but you know, I didn't know that at the time when I murdered her. So you should give me a break on the murder because I was, I was under the impression that she was cheating. And I hate cheaters, Your Honor. It's why I beat that cop on the steps of the Capitol. There was a big uh, fight about what state, federal, and constitutional laws applied to election disputes. Election disputes? Motherfucker, there's no dispute. That's illegal. They're stopping the counting of electoral votes. They built a fucking gallows, you chump. And now the Biden team wants to jail those mm. who uh, raise... Who what? Who what? Wants to jail those who questions what? Questions about the election process. Oh, okay. We're just going to... That's what it is. That's, the Biden administration wants to jail people who question the election process. That, that, that's just going to, this asshole is just going to let that asshole say that and go, uh-huh. So the Biden administration, Joseph Robinette Biden, as president of the United States of America, is going to, wants to, I guess, and maybe in his heart of hearts, he just doesn't have the nerve to carry it out, or maybe he's just going to, he's just waiting, he's biding his time, according to Tom Fitton, to arrest anyone who questions things. So where do they start? Are they, is Steve Ducey first to go? Or I guess Peter Ducey? Whichever one, any of the Ducey family? Process. It's, uh, to me, it's suppression. And obviously the target is Donald Trump, who is the likely candidate against uh, Biden. <laughs> Not at this point, dummy. Uh, which is just a further indication that the DOJ, right. with the help of the, of the House, it's terribly politicized. Tom, the DOJ, with the help of the House, I guess that means the um, the Jan Six Committee. So they needed help being politicized, or it could be that the particular aspect of justice that they are actually they're having to deal with right now is not your kind of like run of the mill violent act or some sort of um, you know Wall Street corruption, but involved the former president of the United States and his political lackeys, both in his party and without, who were trying to keep him in power, which is in, at its root, 
a political circumstance. Just because the crime is political does not mean that those involved in, in executing a you know search warrants or, or forming indictments or any of that stuff are therefore politicized because the otherwise you could never charge a politician because everything you go after um, when it comes to a politician is you being politicized. It's just, I mean, are these guys fucking children? These are supposedly grown men. Fuck, I'm probably older than both these guys. That's the embarrassing part. By the way, you're watching House Sparks Mega Worldwide. I'm wound up today, man. Some of this stuff is aggravating. But at the same time, I'm having a good time. I hope you're having a good time, too. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Give a thumbs up. Support the show uh, in any way that you can. I adore you guys. I appreciate it more than you know. Wound up.